Hey, welcome back to Rocket Garage and Service. In today's video, we're going to be installing an electric water pump for our LS engine. We purchased this electric water pump for my 2002 Pontiac Trans Am. As you can see, it's just a standard uh, LS configuration. This engine is a 6.0 with all the bolt-ons, piston rod setup. I purchased this water pump from Summit. It, it, the brand is Mazir. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It is their LS uh, series high flow electric water pump with idler. So that way we can still run our serpentine belt as factory. The thermostat is moved into our outlet. So your traditional thermostat housing, you have to remove it according to the instructions. So otherwise you would have two thermostats. I am curious if anybody knows why they moved the thermostat from the factory location, which is the inlet, to the outlet. I imagine it is a part of just the emissions control of having a factory engine warm up in a certain time frame where this probably uh, prolongs the warm up and it's just a better setup just like old small block Chevy would have it. Anyways, if you know, please comment. Next, I actually uh, purchased a fuel pump wiring kit from Radom. I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I said it wrong. And I like this kit because I like these waterproof relays. It is a 30 amp relay. It has an inline fuse block. So I like that the fuses, you remove this cap and you just got your standard fuse there, which I need to check the rating. And then we have some nice quality wires. This electric water pump is rated, I think, between 11 and 14 amps, which is why I wanted to go with a good wiring kit. It did come with some accessories like this wiring harness here that does have an inline fuse. It came with new gaskets and it came with our uh, heater core hose, uh, I guess you say fittings, which we got to take our caps off, lube up our O-rings and install it. Our inlet, um, fitting is loose so that's something i need to just inspect and uh torque down other than that it's kind of just a generic uh bolted on it is saying the instructions that there could be some interference with our throttle body in different situations with like corvettes and everything so please read your instructions for your application went ahead and put the electric water pump in our vice i do have aluminum jaws on it but use paper towels just don't want to damage to finish, although I know I will, uh, but precautions everywhere I can. Went ahead and removed our heater core, uh, I guess caps. They were metric, used a six millimeter, if you can see there. And now I'm gonna get the fittings and get ready to thread them in here and lube our O-rings. So we have our fittings installed. Ended up using a one inch socket. I'll show you just for proof, uh, standard and I used dielectric grease to lube our O-ring. It was a very tight fit, so if you have a socket that's like a deep, um, what we call it, impact socket, like I can't even get it on that one, but on this one I could. So anyways, what I did is I installed this fitting by itself, and then I was able to get the socket on here securely to tighten down the, the second one. So we got that out of the way. Let's move on to checking our thermostat and tightening down this fitting because I can loosen it by hand. So we have our outlet hose removed. As you can see, it's pretty, I don't know, generic. Uh, has our O-ring here. It's kind of a snug fit to get it out, but I mean, what bad, just O-ring fit. We have our LS. This is a standard LS thermostat that will not work in here. This one uses like your small block Chevy thermostat. This thermostat is Moto Rad. Uh, I've heard really good things about these thermostats. I actually started using them in all my cars. Um, and it is a 180 degree thermostat. So I'm wondering if that's going to be an issue for us, being that we have our big uh, white radiator that is already running really cool at times in these colder months. But we're going to see. So now I know just use a standard like small block Chevy thermostat in here and we'll be good. So I'll put everything back together and torque our fitting. So we have that tightened down. It's a little bit of a pain. I use this, I was told it was a, called a Ford wrench. It's made by Crescent. It mars it up a little bit, but I do not have any aluminum tools that will go to this big of a size. So I used it, took a little dead blow 
tapped it on the end because I just I couldn't get the torque without rotating uh, in this vise um, because I don't have the vise tighten down a whole lot a lot because I don't want to warp this two piece design and mar it so anyways that's the way I did it I feel pretty confident about it next thing I'm going to move on to is we need to get our thermostat out of the car because we have to gut it and then install it next as you can probably hear, we are draining our antifreeze. We removed our radiator cap because it had a suction on it. And we got an old coffee can and then my backup is a, what do you call it? A little dishwashing tub that we we're gonna throw away that has been repurposed. So I'm gonna let it drain. That way we can recycle a lot of this fluid and put it back in the car. While we are waiting on the coolant to finish draining, I removed our intake. I just loosened up this hose clamp. It's a little bit different for uh, other followers because I don't have a mass airflow sensor. But I just loosened that up, unclipped it, and folded everything back. I do have my catch can uh, vents into there, so I had to take that off. Next, I'm going to take these 10 millimeter bolts off. I'm just going to go and get this out of the way and just get as much room as we can so we can just take our time and do this the right way. So I just did a lot. Let me get y'all caught up again. Went ahead and removed the throttle body. It was a five millimeter. It was a pain in the butt to get. Got that out of the way. And then of course my catch can that's at the market. I had a 17 millimeter bolt holding it to the head. Got that out of the way. It was a pain to get all my lines. And I also had a drain on my catch can that I had to cut all types of zip ties too. We got it pretty much cleared out. Got the upper radiator hose off. I have our lower radiator hose loose, but then I had to get to our heater core hoses. You see the hose clamps there. That's why the catch can was just easier to go ahead and remove. And we're just getting all this more accessible uh, to not damage that nice water pump. So now I think I'm gonna get our lower radiator hose off and then get these heater core hoses off and see what type of mess we're gonna make. Our radiator has finally stopped draining. And yeah, so let's get these disconnected. Not that it's hard, it's just time consuming. We got our water pump off. It was three 10 millimeter screws here, 10 three millimeter well, bolts here. Kind of wish I would have took off this idler pulley. That last bolt was in the way. If I just would have removed it, I think it's a 15 millimeter bolt. I could have got with it uh, to it with power tools a lot easier. We have our water pump over there. Let's go over there to it. Fairly simple. We're going to take uh, these two 15 millimeter bolts off. We're going to install them here. And then it's two 10 millimeter bolts here. And then we're going to move our thermostat and then we'll bolt it on here. So we have our tensioner on here. I use a little anti-seize, put our three eighths impact uh, on two feel pretty confident with that next we got our thermostat housing so this one's the one that doesn't have the thermostat integrated in it uh, i don't know what years they changed that so if you're doing this that could be a thing i think in the instructions it tells you like to cut it off and just so you can just run this this thermostat is actually like brand new i think it's it is 180 degrees also uh, but anyways we won't be using it pretty sure i'm going to, have to take this gasket off and use it in here because you can see there's really no place for a gasket like an o-ring so i'm going to make sure it stays in place because it's meant to be kind of held with the thermostat holding everything in place so i'm going to set that up and uh torque everything down okay uh this is what looks like the final product i mean i kind of feel a little bit bad uh that you got this beautiful anodized aluminum and you got these cringe pieces but really you're probably not going to see any of this once everything's on the engine anyways maybe just a little bit of red um i can't remember what size these were they metric worked fine but i went ahead and decided to double check the allen heads on the back and these were one that's standard on the back and it was two different size these two were different size allen heads than these two but anyways they were uh torqued down just fine so I've already cleaned off our gasket surface on the engine. I am going to remove the idler pulley and let's get ready to install this water pump. Okay, one piece at a time. We got our electric water pump installed. We did torque these down to 22 foot pounds. 
Uh, it was an absolute booger bear because of how close this is to our electric fan. You can't really see it there, but and that's a little bit because the radiator doesn't have its support here, so it's leaning back a little bit. So that was a pain. The heater hoses lined up really well. I already got them tightened down. Our lower radiator hose lined up really well. Next step is just reinstalling. I do think we're going to have an issue with this tensioner. It is very tight. So that's probably pissing a uh, um, ruin some of my time because it's, yeah, there's no way that. Anyways, we'll address that later. The upper radiator hose seems to uh, be an issue. It did warn because I guess this neck sticks out a little bit too much. Now I might have to flip the hose around. But so what I am doing, I'm getting ready to put our bracket back here because I want to see if pulling the radiator up a little bit is going to help. But I don't really think so because I think it's already prying it up now. Other than that, it's just kind of one step at a time. I did test fit our throttle body. So far with this throttle body, I am not having an issue. It looks like it's going to clear. I do have the clearance uh, part of the bracket. Let me let me grab it and show you. So this is the bracket that's made to mount behind this Holly. I think it was that a 95 millimeter throttle body. And the hose that comes down here is really tight. That's part of my PCV system. So I'm going to open up all of this just a little bit. Probably just stick a unit bit just right down here and just open it up a couple of sizes. That way my hose will fit in there correctly. And then I think it's time to put the throttle body on. So let me deal with this hose and let me deal with this throttle body. Okay, I got a lot to catch y'all up on. I kind of just started working and didn't pick up the camera. Everything's kind of installed for the water pump side we still got to do our catch can which the vent will connect here our upper radiator hose which the instructions did say it could be an issue is going to need probably some mass massaging but i'm going to deal with that later i'm about to hook up my uh, external like jump pack i use for like emergencies for keeping my truck i'm gonna hook it up to these wires and guys want to hear it run i still need to get under the car and do some other maintenance Spent a lot more time uh, tidying up like my nitrous uh, set up here and uh, zip tying things and just making it look pretty. You can barely see the uh, water pump here the, and I still got to install a catch can right here. That's why we still got some hoses out and a fitting. I do have our um, coolant reservoir hooked up. One thing I did see of how tight my coolant system is is I had to take my upper radiator hose off because it was air locking, which that's going to be something I'm going to start doing more often because I've been having issues burping this car as far as getting the air out of the coolant. Uh, and that was one thing I did notice. And a lot of it's because you pour your coolant in too fast and it creates that pocket. So pouring it slower is one way and me taking that uh, upper radiator hose off. So you can see how our upper radiator hose is rubbing right in here. It's pretty tight. I could probably get away with removing an inch, but then you can see then it gets close to our our pulley on our water pump. So I don't know. That's going to be some massaging and uh, just paying attention to things. We do have clearance. It ain't by much. Let me take you on this side. You can see the fan is clearanced here. I mean, we only got a finger in between there, but uh, we do have clearance. Other than that, like I said, let's look at the battery pack and we need to take some wire, the, the edge off and like that, but our negative don't have that. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're going to turn this on. We're going to put this in the override, which when that starts blinking means, hey, don't look for uh, polarity and everything. I do need to make sure see what fuse we have in here I assume we have one. Oh man there we go so it has a 20 amp fuse it is good so we're gonna go ahead and hook up our ground first all right are you ready there it is our pump is working you can see our coolant. This is freaking awesome because I can just sit here and 
Kind of let it just circulate. Get these air bubbles out of here without we're having to run this engine. So I'm just going to let it run for a little while and just kind of watch it. It ain't that noisy if you hear it. No. Starting to get the air pocket out. Starting to. Oh, yeah. Starting to build some resistance. So I definitely could tell a increase of power. It actually wants to cruise a lot easier. So I don't know what these things are worth in power. I, I've heard like, I want to say like 10 to 20 horsepower. I kind of believe it because it's, it cruises easier. I mean, I could tell I drive this car quite often. My input on the throttle to just cruise down the road isn't, isn't crazy. So anyways, uh, happy with that. And let's keep on testing okay so i want to wrap up this video on this water pump um just to review everything i did use a relay here and this is a fuse um you can see the water pump here um i did have one leak um i had to take the thermostat off the next day after doing some driving around and actually rtv the thermostat gasket in that is normally on a it's the ring that usually goes around the thermostat gasket on the LS. Uh, I had RTV it in. Maybe it just needed a new gasket. I don't know. I just RTV solves it all, no problems. Other than that, no more leaking. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else worth discussing? If I did need to change the thermostat, you can see that's going to be a little bit of a pain. I was reading some reviews. A lot of people just take their intake off, take the th uh, their throttle body off. And then they say it's real easy to get to that. So hopefully, you know, we ain't going to need to do that anytime soon being a new um, thermostat. Other than that, let's close out this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me give you my uh, takes on this water pump. Is it a must? No. Is it cool? Absolutely. Did it lower my temperature of my uh, coolant? Yes, probably on average 10 degrees um my old water pump i had a 180 thermostat by the same company actually and this one's a 180 thermostat and before it would average out to be like 191 192 something like that in the low 190s and this one we're staying closer to that 180 what that thermostat is i do like the fact that if i go to the uh, track i can turn on laptop and I can activate the uh, water pump. That's really cool. Oh, something I didn't share is being that this car has a Holly, I'm not using the Holly to control my fuel pump. I'm actually using the factory computer to, to do that. So what I did is I took the fuel pump wire off the Holly and I ran it to my water pump relay. So now the car primes the fuel pump and the water pump on startup and once it sees rpm signal it fires off the water pump which i think is really cool and that way now when i go into the holly and i do the test outputs i can turn on the fuel pump through the holly and it actually activates my water pump and to control the fuel pump in the car i just put in hp tuners and activate the fuel pump through hp tuners so it's a win-win i'm happy for diagnostics it's really cool Anyways, I think we're going to end off the video here. I hope this helps somebody again. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the thumbs up or the heart symbol. I post these videos on all uh, platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Rumble most of the time. Rumble's shaky. It, it don't cooperate with me. Uh, if you want more content like this, please hit the subscribe button. And on to the next one.